Hey guys, thank you for joining me again. We'll continue to walk through the book of James. Uh, trying to get to the end of, of chapter one. Uh, just go back and just remind you of some of the things that we've talked about over the past several weeks. You know, uh, we talked about how James identified himself as a bond servant. Talked about trials that when you encounter various trials. Talked about wisdom and you know how God says, look, if you like wisdom, ask me. Talked about the difference in a trial and a temptation. Uh, spent some time talking about how that we need to be slow to speak and quick to hear and slow to anger. And then we've been talking about over the past several weeks, we've been talking about being doers of the word. And, you know, James is very, very clear in chapter one that we are to be doers of the word of God, that we're to take God's word and apply it to our life. And we talked last week about being an effective doer and how that, that this doing this doing begins to change all of me. I just don't do it in part of my life that the the goal here is for for me to allow God to take his word and for it to to transform my entire life. And last week we talked about speech and just kind of the importance of speech and how that this relationship with him begins to change what comes out of my mouth and my my, my speech and how important that is and how powerful that the tongue is and how powerful that words are. And uh, what I see here at the end of chapter 1 are very, very practical ways to be doers of the word, be doers in what I say. Uh, today we're going to look at how, how specific things mentioned here. How can I serve? You know, being doers in my, in my service. And here in chapter 1 at the end, he gives... He gives a couple of specific examples, all right? He says, if anyone thinks him, himself to be religious and yet does not bridle the tongue, that's what we talked about last week, the importance of bridling the tongue, putting it under the authority of the Holy Spirit of God and speaking truth. It says, this man's religion is worth, this is what, what verse 27 says, pure and undefiled religion in the sight of, of our God and Father is this. He says, this is what this relationship thing should lead me to, putting this to practice. He mentions two things. He says, to visit orphans and widows in their distress. To visit orphans and to visit widows in their distress. So here are two very, very practical ways to take the truth of God's word and to live it out in very practical ways in the culture in which we live. The first one is, I need I need to take care of widows. I need to I need to visit, I need to spend time with them, I need to check on them, and I also need to check on, do the same thing with orphans. So what is that exactly talking about? A widow is someone that's lost their spouse. All right, whether it be a, uh, it could be a lady, it could be a guy that's been married for some reason, they lost their spouse. And specifically, he said, James says here, look, as followers of Jesus, those people need to be important to us. We need to take care of them. Listen to me, church. We need to take care of widows. We need to check on them. We need to visit on them. We need to look for needs. We need to ask them about needs. You know, we need to look through the lens through different lenses. We don't need to look through the lenses of the world. We need to look through the lenses of the word. We need to view people through the, through the eyes of the gospel. We need to ask God, God, give us eyes to see needs in, in our life of people that you've placed there. Give us eyes to see the needs that they have so that we can respond to those needs. You know, spend time with those people. Call them, text them, you know, check on them and ask about needs. And when needs arise, we need to be quick to minister to those needs. And the same thing with an orphan. An orphan is a child that that does not have does not have a parent with with no parents. That as followers of Jesus, those people need to be dear to our heart. We need to check on orphans. We need to take care of orphans. We need to make sure that they've got clothes, they get educated. We need to make sure that they hear the gospel. We need to make sure that they have food. We need to look for needs and we need to respond to needs in the life of widows and the life of orphans. You know, one of the ways that, that we have been able to practically live that out 
is, has, has been for us in Honduras. We deal with a lot of orphans and a lot of widows, a lot of women who for one reason or another, there is no man in the picture. There's not a guy to support the family. And we have, we have seen God bless over and over and over again as we simply walk out and live out the truth of his words. I can't tell you how many times I've been to a home, a little shack in Honduras, and the, the lady make this statement that we've been praying that someone would come today because we have absolutely no food whatsoever. You know, and I'm going to tell you, it just melts my heart. Been many, many times we've been able to meet physical needs of, of widows. We've been able to meet physical needs of kids. Been able to pay, pay, pay for surgery. Been able to feed. Been able to clothe. And I know those same situations occur in our own in our own counties, in our own cities, in our own state. And we need to be sensitive to those situations and those circumstances. And the, the ministry that we work with in Honduras is Forgotten Children Ministries. It started as finding kids on the street that did not have parents. They were living on the street, eating out of garbage cans. You know, and what a blessing for us to get involved in that and to simply live out James chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, to, to be effective doers of the word, to minister to, to take care of widows and orphans. I would ask you to do this. Ask God how you can do that. Ask God to show you widows and orphans that you can love on, that you can minister to, that you can spend some time encouraging, whether it be through phone calls or text where you can pray for, you can pray over them, you can pray with them, and you can meet physical needs in the lives of people that God places places there for a reason. You know, oftentimes we overlook the needs of people in the most need, and that's widows and orphans. And I challenge you, let Jesus be Jesus in your service and ask him to give you eyes to see needs and a heart to minister to these Precious people, those who have lost a spouse and those who have no parents or who, for some reason, have been separated from their parents. I hope you have a blessed day. Let Jesus be Jesus in you today as you simply walk with him, live out the truth of his word, and serve others because you love Jesus. Thank you so much for watching Complete in Christ as we strive to teach you about the Christ life. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And may you have a blessed day walking with Jesus.